Today we're going to learn about how switch users can access the computer. But first, let's discuss the importance of being able to produce written work independently. According to research done by the creators of the program Handwriting Without Tears, elementary school age students at the kindergarten level may spend up to 24% of the school day engaged in some type of writing activity. As you would expect, handwriting demands increase as students progress throughout their grades. For fifth graders, 58% of their day can be spent participating in a handwriting activity. Look at this chart and notice the increase of words per minute for students who were asked to just copy as fast as they could without errors. Think about how much writing is required throughout the school day. Some examples of this would be taking notes, answering test questions, writing essays, documenting in their journals, and computing math equations. The state of Utah set up standards for keyboarding for their students. The expectations for a third grader is 15 words per minute, an increase in subsequent grades. Here are some interesting facts about typing. Standard workload demands that a person type at about 40 words per minute. Personal assistants type at about 60 words per minute. Word processors type anywhere between 55 to 90 words per minute. Two fingers typists average about 27 words per minute. And remarkably, the fastest typist, Sean Warnock, types as fast as 256 words per minute. So take a moment to think about the physical demands involved in keyboarding and the cognitive load involved in the writing process and multiply that challenge for a switch user. Whenever possible, consider direct select keyboarding first. Switches are used when a student is unable to access the keyboard, a mouse, a touchpad, or an alternate mouse. Alternate mice are devices such as a trackball, a joystick, or the use of mouse keys on a standard keyboard. There are a variety of keyboard adaptations available, and in this case, size does matter. For a student with cerebral palsy, a bigger keyboard with a key guard may work well, while for a student with muscular dystrophy, a smaller keyboard which involves less of a movement range may be successful. There are on-screen keyboards that can be adjusted and accessed with eyes or a head mouse, such as the Zono. Accommodations may also be made to the computer system settings to make keyboarding more accessible. You can set up sticky keys which allows the user who types with one hand or uses a head or a mouth stick to press and release a modifier key such as the Shift, Control, Alt and have it remain active until another key is pressed. You can also adjust the key repeat within the computer system for students who have difficulty releasing a key once it is pressed. So how do students who need to use a switch access a computer? You need a device called a switch interface. You can't just plug a switch directly into the computer, even though many of the switches have a USB connection. You need a component known as a switch interface, which allows the switch presses to be received and interpreted by the computer. The InfoGrip Adapted Mouse is a simple switch interface which emulates a left and a right click. Many of the early learning switch programs use this option. As you can see in the picture, you plug your switches to the right side of the mouse. The device works with Windows, Mac, and Chrome computers. The nice feature of this is that it works like a standard mouse, so it's an easy accommodation to add to a classroom computer that is shared with other students who do not need to use a switch. RJ Cooper created a wireless mouse with two jacks to emulate the left and the right click. And with additional software, the ports can be changed to emulate other keystrokes. The device works with Windows, Mac, and Chrome computers. The great feature is no cords. This can make it easier for students to access the computer in positions other than their wheelchair. 
For students who use a variety of switch accessible programs that require an array of switch access, the AbleNet Hitch 2.0 may be the solution. The device works with Windows, Mac, Chrome, and Android computers. Simply plug the Hitch 2.0 into the USB port on the computer. The switch interface has inputs for up to five switches or one joystick with a 9-pin D-plug. When used with switch accessible software, users are able to control their computer and actively learn and have fun. Let's watch a quick video to see how easy this is to set up. The AbleNet Hitch 2.0 switch interface is very simple to use. All you have to do is plug in your USB connector into the USB port of your computer. It works fine with Mac, Chrome, and Windows machines. First thing you want to do is figure out what activates the program. In this case, I'm demonstrating Tar Heel Readers, and I know that it activates by using the right and the left arrow. My current row is the top row with the orange light on it, and that's for mouse clicks. So I need to move to the orange row. I simply do that by pressing the black button at the top of the box until I get to the orange row. All I have to do then is plug in the switches into the right and left port, and I'm ready to use the switches. I press the switch, and now I'm activating my program. It's as simple as that. For those switch users who are ready to independently create and type their own work, Windows 10 has a wonderful free built-in on-screen keyboard with scanning and word prediction capabilities. You set up the desired features through the Options button on the on-screen keyboard. Using the AbleNet Hitch 2.0 switch interface, connect the switch to the corresponding spacebar input. Note that within the Windows on-screen option, you can change the default of the spacebar to begin scanning using either the Enter key or any other keystroke. Let's watch a quick video to see how the on-screen keyboard works. The first time that your on-screen keyboard comes up, you're going to click on the Options button and be sure that Scan Through Keys and Use Text Prediction is selected. You're going to go ahead and you're going to click OK. Make sure that you have a cursor blinking on the page itself, on the document, and right before you start, you just have to hit any key to start. I'm going to try and type Merry Christmas. You can change the speed. I'm working at about 1.5 seconds. I am not very fast, but as you, those of you that work with students who need this skill, they do get faster. I see the word Mary up on the screen, so I'm going to try and choose it from my word prediction list. And it remembers, because of course I've been practicing for all of you, um, Christmas, but if I was going to type Christmas, I would have to make sure that I press my cap locks down. So I'm going to go ahead and just show you what that feels like. And I'm going to go ahead and then do Christmas. I know it's up there, and I'm, I'll get to it in just a second. But then you, the student would have to turn the cap locks off. And now I'm going to go ahead and choose. Christmas. I missed, so I've got to wait it out again. It can be laborious, but kids do get a whole lot faster. Here are two other on-screen keyboard options. Click and Type is free for Windows. RJ Cooper has an on-screen keyboard with many customizable features for a Windows machine. He also sells keystrokes for a Mac. If it's free, it's for me. Here are some switch activities that are free to use. 
Tar Heel Reader is a collection of easy to read accessible books. Tar Heel Gameplay will allow you to create your own games using YouTube videos. Priority Wood has free single switch activities that can be played online or downloaded to a Windows or Mac computer. Not free but great resources is the Help Kids Learn website, Shining Learning, software from Inclusive Technology and Judy Lynn, Switch Trainer Life Tools, and this SQWORL is a website with many links to other Switch activities and resources. The keys to learning to use a Switch is to always start with motivating, meaningful, and engaging activities. Provide as many opportunities and varied opportunities for practice throughout the day. Linda Burkhardt, who is renowned in our field for working with students with the most significant cognitive and orthopedic impairment, has developed an eight-step program that helps to move children from the cause and effect using a switch to scanning. I highly recommend her resources on the website. This video has been made possible by the MTSSPSRTI project. Happy switching!